Hello, Stephen. Good to catch up with you again uh, here in Barcelona at Mobile World Congress. Great opportunity to be talking about autonomous networks. So, yeah, really look forward to the chat. Hi, Chris. Thank you. Yeah, it's also nice to see you again. And uh, actually, you know, recent years, AI technology developing very fast. And uh, for operators, there is a lot of areas that can invest uh, in their domains, like uh, the uh, business part, uh, operation part, O and M part, and uh, I'm wondering that uh, which part do you think that now the CSPs cares most, and uh, especially for the uh, O and M part, uh, actually, what do you think is a key driver for the CSPs to invest? Yeah, well, there's a lot of drivers. I mean, as we know, the operators are under a great deal of uh, of pressure. I think particularly from the OPEX point of view. I mean, I think that needs to be emphasized. I mean, we're here at on Deer, we're seeing very much flat uh, OPEX and, and revenues, and actually on the networks, on the network operation side, actually slight increases over the last year. So it's tight pressure, but it's not just the need to cut costs, the drivers to cut costs. I mean, there's a strong need to improve customer outcomes, better customer experience, that's a big pressure. I think a lot of, we find a lot of the conversations we're having with operators, that's a big issue for them. And last but not least, it's more revenue. It's about incremental. So even if it's incremental revenue opportunities, it's about driving those, improving and, and getting those. And I think from a AI specifically perspective, I mean, there's a lot of, there's so many use cases. I mean, we can't go through them all, but you know, whether it's predictive maintenance, whether it's service assurance, whether it's in terms of uh, planning or fraud assurance. There's so many different ways in which you could, so many use cases for autonomous networks for auto, greater automation to be feeding through. So yeah, there's a lot of pressure, but there's a lot of opportunities as well. Okay, when we're talking about uh, autonomous network, yeah, actually this is very hot topic for recent, recent years. And now uh, L4, everybody concerned about uh, how to move forward to L4. Some people wondering, what is L4? What is the key indicator or the key feature of L4? So on this part, uh, is there any uh, you can share? Yeah, there's there's a short <laughs> yeah. conversation. We can't go through them all, but yeah, yes. I mean, there's there's a lot needs to be done. Apart from anything else, I mean, so many operators are, are very sort of like you know they they're not that far advanced. Whether they're at level level two or level three, there's a big jump in yeah. terms of what they need to do to get to that next stage, to get to level four. But I mean, some of the components, some of the things needed to support that are things like digital twin automation. There has to be some kind of intent-driven element to it where the business outcomes can be tied with what actually needs to be achieved in terms of a lot of AI capabilities. And of course, all the AI governance and issues that need to be as associated with that. And last but not least, I mean, uh, you know, in terms of capabilities, in terms of uh, co-pilot or, or agents uh, that will sort of help support that uh, human connection for the connectivity there in terms of doing that. I think we're, I mean, we're here at uh, Autonomous Network Summit and yes. we just had the TM Forum, uh, L4 is on launch. And I think that was very good at sort of highlighting in terms of what needs to be, there's a lot that needs to be done in terms of bringing things together. And I think one of my key messages from that that I garnered was, it's not just about um, single domain focus, it's the combination of that sort of single domain automation along with the multi-domain orchestration. It's about connecting it all together to deliver some really good core capabilities. So I think that's my key takeaways, but that's only a, a slim yes. look at um, what we're talking about. So, I mean, maybe I can ask a question back to you. So, I mean, I've, I've of mentioned of some of those things that I think are needed, but what is Huawei itself doing in terms of in some of those areas? Mm. What is your intention? I mean, not just over the next year, but certainly mm. looking ahead. What are you doing to help 
operators to get on to next step with, with level four? Because I've, I've out, outlined there's a lot of things. What is it that Huawei is particularly focusing on? Is, is that's a good question. Actually, autonomous network, especially for carriers, uh, implemented actually is a big project it, and it's a systematic uh, project. Uh, it's um, about many, many aspects. And Huawei actually as a vendor, especially as a telecommunication equipment vendor, we are more focusing on the single network domain side. How to make our single domain uh, network, for example, the IP network and also the court network, RAN network, how to make the single domain network to be autonomy. This is, uh, firstly, it's our uh, very focusing area. And yeah. that makes absolute sense because you need to move in an incremental way. It's very difficult. You can't yes. do it all at once, can yes, you? So. Yes, And even uh, according to what TM Forum suggests, that we quite agree uh, one of the most important principles is single domain autonomy and cross-domain collaboration. So we believe that it, only the vendors like uh, Huawei, Nokia, Ericsson, we make our single domain autonomy, then it, we will build a solid foundation for the cross-domain, the OSSBS part. So that's why we focusing on the single domain part. This is the first one. And the second one that what we believe is actually we think that the maintenance and the optimization scenario is the most value scenario, especially on the beginning stage of L4. Why we say, say that? It's because we think that for the maintenance work, the uh, fault locating uh, work, and also for the network optimization work, I think these works are kind of certain things. With the technology, of the AI and Gen AI, this agent and copilot, I think we will make the automation gradually become more and more uh, into reality. Yeah. So, for example, if maybe we can do it uh, the automation rate uh, to seventy percent, yeah, with the Gen AI technology for the fault locating and uh, fault dispatching. Yeah, and uh, with the GI, when you use uh, half a year later, maybe it will raise to 80% or 90%. Mm -hmm. And finally, we believe that when we use utilize the AI technology, the GI technology, it will finally go to 100%. Yeah, because the, the root cause of the fault is limited. Yeah, the kind of the faults is limited. So we believe that this kind of scenario is what the GNI technology can be utilized uh, most and can uh, have the biggest value. And also, the same situation is like uh, the network optimization. The, this scenario is also limited. It's also a matter of quantity. If we utilize the GNI technology, we can finally uh, finalize all the uh, network optimization scenario. Yeah. So, uh, that's why uh, Huawei, when we start uh, from the domain, single domain area, we also start from the high value scenario like the maintenance and optimization. A exactly, O and yes. I, I think O, o and and is, is one of the areas. I think, yeah, because yes. the TM forums identified sort of high value areas that could be uh, focused on, and that's sort of, that makes sense as one of them to target, yeah. Yes, and actually, besides these two scenarios, the maintenance and the optimization, we also start to exploring the possible solutions for the operation side. For the operation, uh, especially what you mentioned about the customer experience, yeah, so for the operation side, actually, we think that it's a bit more creative work yeah, for the operation side. Yeah, because for some services, uh, might be how how to make this service more fit for the for the customer. Actually, maybe you need need a very experienced uh, marketing guys to think about uh, all the procedure. So in this scenario, also we we also have some developer work on the uh, agent, but uh, it's like it's a blue ocean. Yeah, yeah. we think that uh, it's not limited. Yeah, but you can still you can still 
drill down the variables, yes. can't yes. you? So, yes, we yeah. can find one or two today. We can find the, the, the third one uh, yesterday or, or tomorrow. Uh, but I think that is a very creative work. Yeah, we can start from some of kind of scenario, and uh, we believe that it will uh, become more and more. But uh, it's not limited. Yeah, and we also mm -hmm. believe that it's also right direction. But this kind of uh, work, it need more time uh, compared to the maintenance and the optimization. Yeah, for the maintenance and optimization, maybe we will close it uh, in like two or three years. Yeah, but uh, operation side or even the other domain, maybe we need more time to realize that. It, it, it has to be, it's a step-by-step -step process. Yes. I, I think as you were saying, you can't bother bore the ocean. I think that's one of the things that's been worrying operators. I think they feel daunted about uh, it just being too much. And I think this is why it's good, this kind of approach where you sort of break it down, yes. you can achieve some early wins with the, uh, the easier scenarios or, or at least the slightly more simpler uh, scenarios. I think it's, yeah, it's the way to go, isn't it? Yes. Well, thank you very much. We've sort of talked about some of the problem areas briefly, some of the opportunity, some of Huawei will be uh, yeah. doing uh, and is already doing. So it's good to talk. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you very much. Stephen. It's also good to talk to with you. Yeah. Thank you.